Mm. Thank you very much uh, for invitation. Um, yeah, for this conference. Um, I, yeah, I will talk about the polyhedral models for K theory of uh, certain varieties. The most part of this work, uh, th this talk will be based on uh, uh, my joint work with uh, Evgeny Smirnov. Um, but there are like some further discussions, which uh, with uh, Andreas Gross and Ben Briggs, uh, and um, well, maybe partly something I will say will come from these further discussions. So yeah, I would mention these people. Also, uh, Ben, he contributed to his iPad for this talk today, so I'm not very familiar with technology. I might be a little bit, <laughs> a little bit off, but I'm sorry for this. Okay um yeah also like the talk is quite short so i probably will skip most of the details but if something is not clear and you have any questions you can stop me and i'll try to clarify or like you can ask after a talk as well whatever you prefer okay so let's let's begin so um i i start i just want to describe first uh kind of two quite abstract uh, constructions in the computer of algebra uh one is uh, rather classical and now one is uh, uh, slight variations of this classical construction. So let me start with a classical one. Um, so uh, we start with a vector space. So uh, V uh, is a vector space. So here I work, um, today I will mostly work with vector space and algebras over a uh, field of real numbers, but uh, most things I, I will tell will work over other fields as well. But just to be concrete, let's keep uh, the real numbers. Um, okay, so we start with a vector space V. Uh, and some homogeneous polynomial uh, on this vector space. So it's a homogeneous polynomial f uh, on the vector space v. And uh, to such a, to such a polynomial, we can associate an algebra a v, uh, a f. Uh, and this algebra is given by um, as a quotient of the ring of differential operators on this vector uh, vector space v uh, by the ideal of both uh, differential operators which annihilate our polynomial f. So to be more concrete, so if we choose some basis, so if we um, if we uh, work with a concrete basis, so our vector space will be R to the N, then the ring of differential operators, this just uh, this is will be uh, a polynomial ring in uh, partial derivative with respect to our standard uh, standard coordinates, which correspond to the standard basis. So any differential operator will be just a polynomial in this partial derivatives. And uh, the way you apply this differential operator to your homogeneous polynomial function is in the usual way. And the annihilator of the polynomial f uh, is just uh, those operators uh, which completely annihilate it. So after you apply this uh, operator, you get identical function, uh, identical zero function. Okay, so you can consider such quotient that this gives us some algebra. Uh, but turns out that this algebra is not, uh, is not just any algebra, it satisfies several very nice properties. So um, if you start with a polynomial uh, f again, homogeneous polynomial, then uh, this quotient algebra will always be graded. So in our words, this annihilator of f will be a homogeneous ideal. And uh, the graded pieces of this algebra will go exactly from zero to the degree of our polynomial f. Uh, uh, moreover, like the zero component and the top dimensional component, so let's say uh, here d is, uh, so this is equal to the degree of our polynomial f. Um, so both zero and d dimensional component, they all, they both will be equal to r. Uh, and we'll have some Poincare duality um, in our algebra. So namely we'll have, uh, so if we have an i component and d minus i component, uh, there's a natural map to the div component, which takes element a and b uh, like this couple and maps it to their product a times b. Well, if you want, uh, um, uh, so uh, you, 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 you can, so this is a bilinear pairing. So this is bilinear in, in both variables. And uh, this pairing is non-degenerate, meaning that for any A, there exists B such that uh, their product is non-zero. Um, uh, so this is something we already have seen in your uh, Johanna talks. Uh, talk uh, like before. So this is like Poincare duality. And the lastly, this algebra AF, this is kind of, this condition is uh, uh, just by construction, it will be generated by degree one elements. But uh, uh, to be honest, uh, oh, 
there is a slight modification of this construction, which uh, which uh, gives more general algebras, which are great that uh, they satisfy Poincaré duality, but they not necessarily generate in degree one. So this generation degree one, it's uh, it's kind of an artifact of uh, the particular case I consider, but it's not maybe the super important property which we get of this algebra. But nevertheless, in the literal construction which I discussed, we, we get it. So uh, what we obtain this algebra, which is why any four properties, and uh, um, it turns out that actually any algebra which satisfies these four properties uh, can be constructed in, in, in this way. So any algebra which is graded, uh, it satisfies by credibility generated degree one, can be constructed as a quotient of differential operator, uh, ring of differential operators on some vector space, modular annihilator of some function f. And uh, this is uh, like a version of uh, uh, Macaulay duality. Uh, Macaulay's duality. It's uh, usually people call Macaulay duality a slightly different statement, but this is like a version of this very classical uh, duality in commutative algebra. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, one construction. Let me. Okay, let me move to combinatorial version of this construction. Um, so in combinatorial Macaulay's duality, we, we do very similar thing. Instead, uh, except of instead of vector space, V, we now have a, a lattice lambda. So lambda is some lattice. So you can think about this as being just a Z to the N. Um, we can take finite trunk lattice. And G now uh, is not a polynomial. It can be any function. Uh, on this uh, lattice lambda. And then we can construct uh, again an algebra, which will be, which I denote by kg. Uh, and this algebra will be given as a quotient of uh, uh, ring of shift operators. So you can think about shift operators as discrete versions of uh, differential operators. So, um, and uh, quotient by, again, those operators which fully annihilate g. So if you want to be more concretely concrete, so then you can, again, if you choose your basis, then the ring of shift operators, um, so this ring of shift operators will be just equal to the Laurent polynomial ring into uh, uh, Laurent polynomial ring of translations um, with respect to the standard basis vectors. So here, uh, T, E, I, so let's say, E1 up to EN, this is a standard basis of my lattice uh, Z to N, and TI acts on function F in the following way. So if I want to evaluate it at a point X, this is, will be uh, F of X uh, plus EI. So we just shift the argument of our function by standard basis vector EI. Uh, and uh, so this is... Uh, 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 translation with respect to EI, but of, of course we can take the inverse of this where we take, instead of adding EI, we can shift by minus EI. So this is uh, Laurent, like this is naturally Laurent polynomial ring. Or in our way, you can think about this, like this shift operators is naturally isomorphic to group algebra uh, of, uh, of, of, of your lattice. Um, and as before, uh, so this shift, like this group algebra of our lattice acts on functions uh, and uh, um, annihilator of function G is a set of all operators such that uh, if we apply them, that we get identically equal, functions which are identically equal to zero. Okay, so this is a very similar construction, except of instead of differentiations, we take shifts, and instead of functions or polynomial in the vector space, we take a function in the lattice. So this is kind of a discrete version of what we had before. And again, we have some algebra, but uh, the kind of interesting part that this algebra is also, it has some uh, nice structure. Um, and the structure is given by so-called uh, frobenius gorenstein duality. So let me explain what is what, what do I mean by this. Um, so if I have a, okay, so if I have some commutative algebra A, and if I have some linear function in this commutative algebra, uh, this gives me a pairing on my algebra in the following way. So I can take, uh, if I want to pair two elements, A and B, uh, so then uh, the pairing between these two elements will be the value of my function L on their product. Um, so 
since my algebra was commutative, this is symmetric pairing. And since my function was linear, this is a bilinear pairing. So this, uh, any linear function on a commutative algebra provides a bilinear pairing on this algebra in, by, by just this uh, formula. And I, I just call this pairing uh, Gorenstein, Frobenius Gorenstein duality uh, if uh, this pairing is non degenerate. Again, meaning that for any element, there is an element which pairs in non trivial way with it. Um, so maybe just a quick, uh, uh, quick. Uh, Comment is that the Poincare, usual Poincare duality uh, is a Gorenstein duality, it is like Frobenius Gorenstein duality. And here, by function L, we can take uh, the function which uh, Johanna in her talk called degree function. Um, so you can think about this as an isomorphism of a top degree component with a uh, with your field R. Uh, and extended by zero to our components. And if you take this linear function to be this uh, degree of an element, you know, top degree component of your graded algebra, then Poincaré duality, uh, Poincaré pairing, like a usual Poincaré pairing is exactly given by uh, the formula above. So it's a, it's a particular, it's some general, you can think about this frobenius gorenstein duality as a generalization of Poincaré duality for algebras which are not necessarily graded. Um, okay. And um, so the main uh, theorem, which is uh, kind of this slight modification of this classical uh, Macaulay duality, is that uh, the algebra, so if we go back to this combinatorial construction, we start with functional the lattice, and uh, we take this uh, quotient, uh, uh, we take this uh, quotient of uh, uh, sh of the, this shift operator sector my, on, on our lattice lambda, uh, by uh, those shift operators which annihilate function G, then the quotient like this factor algebra is always will has uh, will come with natural uh, Frobenius Gorenstein duality. So it always will have some non degenerate pairing uh, of this specific type. And again, moreover, like the um, again any algebra which has uh, Frobenius Gorenstein duality and also has like this um, generation condition, so it's generated by invertible elements. You can think about this condition as analog of this generated in degree one condition in the classical situation. So if algebra has duality and uh, generated by invertible elements, then it is isomorphic to some algebra KG for some function G on uh, some lattice lambda. So again, um, any algebra of this kind comes from, from, from construction I described. So there are these two constructions, they, they kind of uh, are very uh, similar. Uh, so now let me maybe go to the main example, um, how where this construction appear, uh, like there some natural algebras uh, can be described in the following way. And uh, my main example will come from toric geometry. So uh, let's say, so let me fix some smooth and complete fan. So for for those who doesn't know like toric uh, geometry let me just uh, mention that um well first of all smooth comp okay toric geometry uh, associates uh, a certain variety with a toro section to to every uh, every every fan and the smooth complete fans are exactly those which correspond to compact and smooth uh, toric varieties so uh, for each uh, such fan, we have uh, a variety, which I'll later denote, I think, X sigma. And this will be a smooth and complete uh, toric variety. Um, but but just purely combinatorially so far, uh, we, to each fan, we can associate a space of polytopes um, so let me put space and quotes here, and I'll explain in a second what I mean, my, I mean by this. So space of polytopes uh, which have a normal fan equal to uh, sigma. And uh, um, so, yeah, so v, by V sigma, I'll denote like a vector space of polytopes uh, with normal say uh, with normal fan equal to sigma. And by uh, lambda sigma, I'll correspond a sub lattice in this space which correspond to lattice polytopes. Again, we have like uh, all possible polytopes of given normal fan, and we have a, inside of this, we have a lattice of 
uh, integer polytopes, uh, which are like polytopes which have vertices at, at lattice points, at integer at integer points. Uh, again, uh, integer polytopes, but again with the same property that the normal fan uh, is equal to sigma. Or okay. So let me uh, explain what do I mean by space of polytopes. Like the easiest way to think about this. So here in the black, uh, I uh, have a uh, I draw a fan, and then uh, to define a polytope which has the given normal fan, basically I need to specify like four numbers. So each ray, so my two-dimensional picture, I have two-dimensional polygon. Um, so uh, to to define it, I just need to tell you where where are the sides of my where like the uh, edges of my polygon. And uh, since I know that my normal fan is, uh, since I know my normal fan, the only information I need to specify is uh, how far each particular edge uh, is to zero. So, and this is given by just the four tuple of numbers, uh, H1, H2, H3, and H4. And these numbers, they just tell how far uh, I need to uh, move my uh, corresponding, uh, corresponding hyperplane, or like line in this case. So for example, in these two pictures, like in the second picture, I have two polygons. I just shifted them slightly. So they have like um, three of these four numbers are coincide, but the fourth one, uh, H1 prime, is uh, is increased with respect to H1. So that just moves uh, one of the side further away from zero than the other side. So, and then of course, you can kind of see that um, if I choose arbitrary collection of these numbers, then I, I, I will be a little bit in trouble because what could happen is my H1 prime, or if I take it too big, it can kind of go away, it can, it can uh, disappear from a picture uh, um, if it goes like, uh, further than a certain point. So at some point, like on the second picture, H1, like the site which corresponds to like this vertical site uh, is already very short, but if I move it even further to the right, eventually it will disappear. And um, uh, so uh, there are several ways how we can think about. So what I'm trying to say is that um, in this collection, in this uh, uh, space of the, so I want to think about the space of these polytops as just uh, as the polygons with this normal fan is just R four, uh, which is given just by these four numbers H one uh, up to H four, and inside of this I have a lattice uh, uh, which is Z four, which corresponds just to the uh, those uh, polygons which are given by integer numbers. But somehow, if I if I choose my numbers not in a smart way then the, the polygon which I get as intersection of these inequalities will be a little bit weird. Uh, it, it will not be the geometric object I would like to consider. So there are several ways how you can think about this. One way is you can just think about this formally. You can just think that for some good collections of these four tuples of numbers, I get actual polytope, but for some uh, 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 collection of numbers which intersect in a, not in a uh, good way, we, we just treat this as a formal um, just as a formal uh, kind of polytope. But it turns out actually that you can do something better. You can treat even a uh, bad collection of numbers as some geometric object. And uh, in this case, um, what happens is like if your uh, if your like height H1 becomes too large, it turns out that the right thing to do is to consider uh, kind of a couple of polytopes. One of them will be uh, what is left of your original one, namely like this dash triangle, and you keep it kind of with a sign plus, but um, but also it turns out that to you you need to add like this little triangle which pops up but with a negative sign. Uh, so and somehow this geometric object will play a role of a polytope uh, for all of your geometric considerations which you uh, can do. Um, okay, so this was a bit quick, but I hope I didn't confuse everyone by this explanation. Um, so anyway, um, so if we come back to uh, like the toric uh, geometry, so we have, we fixed our fan. Uh, so we have uh, two vectors. We have a vector space of polytops, which corresponds to this fan, which is just given by this uh, heights, HI, so support numbers. Uh, we also have a lattice of uh, this height, which gives us uh, 
like um, which correspond to integer polytops. So in the smooth cases, just correspond to integer support numbers. And then we can consider two natural functions of this space on this space and the lattice. So one function is just a volume function. So this function just computes the volume of a poly polytope given by with uh, polytope of given support numbers. And again, for usual polytope, this will be just usual volume. But for this funny polytope, you'll need to take the volume of one piece and subtract the volume of another piece. And this will be uh, how you can define volume. Or again, you can uh, treat it just formally uh, by analytically, since the volume is a polynomial, it's easy to see that volume will be a polynomial in these numbers HIs. So you can kind of formally extend it to the um, to the collections of uh, heights which do not correspond to actual convex polytope. Uh, so uh, different ways how you can think about this. And similarly, you can think about uh, for the lattice polytope, there is a Erhard function uh, which just computes, again, we've seen it before, so a hard function of a polynomial, of a polytope, this is just the number of lattice points uh, inside of the polytope, uh, in the whole polytope. Um, so, um, turns out that, uh, so this is a, a lambda sigma is a, uh, uh, lambda sigma is a, uh, is a, uh, so it's multidimensional lattice, and turns out this Erhard function is still a polynomial on this lattice. So we've seen like one-dimensional uh, situation today, where we consider just the uh, Erhard function on dilated polytope delta uh, c times delta. So that's what appeared in Joanna talks. Here is like kind of multidimensional version of this Erhard polynomial, but still this uh, lattice counting. Uh, uh function is a polynomial function on on this uh, lattice of uh, integer polytopes but it's like multivariate polynomial in our case uh, <clears throat> okay and um, uh, we have two uh, we have a vector space with a function we have a lattice with a function so we can construct as before, two algebras A sigma, which will be again like space of differential operators annihilated, uh, space of a, a differential operators quotient by those which annihilate volume polynomial. We can consider algebra K sigma, which will be the space of shift operators quotiented by those which annihilate uh, Erhard polynomial. And theorem says that um, these two algebras they recover some topological invariance of our toric varieties. Namely, uh, it recovers uh, Cho ring or cohomology ring, and this is uh, uh, first was observed by Puchlikov and Havansky. And uh, uh, the second construction also can recover growth and group of a toric variety, K0. So this is a uh, again, a ring which you can associate to a to, to a variety, more generally not a serial toric variety, uh, which uh, um, which roughly speaking plus, uh, parameter parameterize uh, vector bundles or coherent shifts on your variety uh, with uh, uh, with a product given by usual tensor tensor product on on on, on shifts. And again, uh, the way I stated it, uh, like uh, this isomorphism holds over, like after a tensor product, things over R, but uh, both uh, theorems, they have uh, integer, um, they have integer versions. So you can, if you define, like if you consider, um, if you consider this uh, in slightly different setting, you can actually get rid of like this tensor and then you can get isomorphism as an integer, uh, as, as, as rings, not as algebras. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, and this is yeah from our work with uh, Evgeny. Um, so this is like one example. Another example is uh, kind of similar, but um, just slightly different setting. So uh, we can consider um, a variety of flag, like uh, full flag variety. So this is a variety of uh, flags F zero instead of, so my flags F um, is given. So this is just a chain of vector spaces uh, in V one, 
inside of etc except to the n which is equal to cn um, so this is a flag and uh, such that the dimension of uh, vi is equal to i so this is just a chain of in included uh, subspaces and the uh, uh, flag variety of uh, uh, of dimension n is a uh, uh, variety which parameterizes all possible flags in c to the n and um, it's not so hard to see that this flag variety can be obtained as a homogeneous space under uh, sln uh, after a, uh, sln group and the uh, more precisely, this is isomorphic to uh, SLN mod the Borel subgroup, which is subgroup of upper triangular matrices. So now, if this in if in this situation we consider the uh, the lattice to be the character lattice of our Borel, which is just isomorphic to n minus one dimensional lattice. Well, it has more structure, but for for us it may be not super important the extra structure which comes from it, but it's just some finite trunk lattice. Uh, then we can again define two functions on this lattice, and uh, uh, one of them uh, takes the character lambda and computes the volume of corresponding gilfan settling polytope uh, again to uh, again to, to to be slightly more precise. Um, gilfan settling polytope we associate to uh, dominant weights uh, of, uh, of 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 our of our character lattice, uh, but. Again, you can similarly extend this construction. So this gives us a linear association of polytops to uh, characters. And even though it defined only in this uh, open cone inside of the character lattice, we can extend it by linearity to outside of this open cone. But we'll get not just uh, convex polytops, but so-called virtual polytops. And these are like this uh, uh, funny pictures, which I um, which I showed before. So in the end, kind of the volume of Gilfan settling polytope makes sense uh, outside of the uh, cone of dominant weights. Uh, so uh, we can define a, um, yeah, so we can define a volume function on this lattice, which will compute the uh, volume function of Gilfan settling polytope, and we can define Erhard function uh, of uh, if we take uh, er Gilfan settling polytope, we can compute number of lattice points inside of it, and again we can extend this function from this open cone to uh, the whole lattice and again we can associate two algebras and uh, as before this algebras compute either Cho ring or uh, uh, k uh, k zero of flag varieties and again the Cho ring was known before this is work by um, Kave uh, wait sorry so this is known by work of Kave and uh, this is uh, the the k fear result is is new. Um, okay, so I think I have just a couple more minutes. So let me just finish with one um, quick, like more general uh, construction. So um, so from topology, uh, we know that if we have a Grothendieck group and we have a Chorn ring, we resolve this a map which is called Chorn character. Uh, from the growth entity group to to the uh, Cho ring, and this uh, uh, so this is a group homomorphism, and uh, it becomes an isomorphism. It's ring homomorphism, and it becomes an isomorphism if we tensor both sides with uh, Q or well, classically people tensor with Q, but you can also tensor with R. It doesn't uh, make much difference, and uh, it turns out that we always have uh, we have kind of. In, in this abstract construction, like the which comes from this Macaulay duality and the uh, combinatorial Macaulay duality, we always have uh, such um, such an isomorphism, uh, such a homomorphism. We can always construct the map from uh, from character. We can construct an analog of uh, this strong character map from Kg to Af. Uh, and moreover, we know that this is an isomorphism if and only if like these two uh, functions. So f is a polynomial, and so if this is an isomorphism if and only if g can be obtained as application of some differential operator to f. And uh, like this equality, you can think about as a, um, as a, a Riemann-Roch formula which relates uh, the earlier characteristic. So 
in a topology like this g function would correspond to early characteristic and f function will correspond to some um, intersection numbers and there is a Rimerov formula which connects this to so somehow uh, in this abstract uh, construction two algebras are isomorphic if and only if there is a version of uh, Rimerov formula which holds for them so this is like an hour more general result about uh, these two commutative algebra constructions Okay, so let me finish. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Leonid. Uh, questions for Leonid? Just go ahead and unmute yourself. Put it down in the chat if you want. This hi. Um, does the flag variety um, example work in other V types? Uh, yes. Uh, so yeah, this works for all G mod B, where is G reductive and uh, yeah, and B is a barrel, uh, and um, it even works slightly more general uh, for like some spherical varieties. Uh, yeah. So somehow. It works whenever Picard generates key theory. Uh, okay. And if Picard doesn't, then yeah, it's yeah. Can I ask sort of a general question? I'm not sure if my question is going to make sense, but um, so you have the like a, uh, a sub f um, construction and the case of G construction. Can you always yeah. like sort of associate one to another just by sort of defining the g the same way the f is in some sense yeah so that's so i was wondering about this this kind of theorem is uh, is one it came up from one like hope to say yes <laughs> right. but unfortunately so um so in particular okay so what you always have if f is equal to g then you always have an isomorphism but it turns out that it's kind of much more flexible situation is much more flexible i mean mm -hmm. if you wanted to do to have some natural pair then like maybe one thing you want is like to have this isomorphism like charm character isomorphism and this theorem kind of tells you that you have a lot of freedom you can really apply like any differential operator to one polynomial to to get something which is isomorphic mm -hmm. um so in this sense the answer is kind of no uh i mean at least um maybe you need to think about more structure but that's something which uh, i think about at the moment but the most naive approach at least doesn't allow you to reconstruct one algebra from another just like to get one polynomial out of an hour in, in any canonical way yeah cool thanks are there any other questions Okay, so let's thank Leonid again. Thank you. Thanks.